What's up everybody, how's it going? In a couple of months, it's gonna have been four years since I started programming. And it hit me earlier tonight that during these four years, I've learned a lot about coding. I've learned a lot about writing software, about building complex systems, and I figured that it would be interesting to share with you three of the most important lessons that I've learned throughout these four years. That way, if you're early on in your coding career, hopefully you can learn these lessons ahead of the curve, and if you're later on in your coding career, maybe you've even got more experience than I do, then hopefully these lessons will serve as a healthy reminder of something that you already know that's really important. So with that, Let's jump into the first lesson that I learned throughout these four years of programming, and that is that you should not get overly attached to the code that you write. If we take a step back for a second, I think that as human beings, we have a tendency to take pride in what we do. We have a tendency to create attachment to what we build. As an example, if you launch a company, you will be very attached to it. It'll be like your baby. If you create a work of art, you'll be really proud of it. It'll be like an extension of yourself. And similarly, when you write code, it kind of feels like that. You start to become attached to it. You put a lot of effort into it. It's your code. You came up with it. But I'm here to tell you that that's the wrong mindset to have. Or perhaps the word wrong is a little bit harsh, but it's an unhealthy mindset to have. Because you see, coding by nature is a very iterative process. If you take just a single block of code or a file of code that you might write, it's very likely that you're not just going to write it once and then be done with it. You're going to write it once, then you're going to rewrite it, then you're going to make tweaks to it, then you're going to refactor it, then that block of code is going to be handed off to somebody else, then it's going to be handed off to somebody again, then it's going to be moved, then it's going to be completely deleted and replaced, then edited. You get the idea. The point is that your code is very likely going to be ephemeral. It's not going to live forever. It's going to be tweaked. And if you get overly attached to it, at best, you will be very unhappy because you won't be able to accept when it naturally has to get changed, has to get deleted, or at worst, you will actually hinder the product or the company that you're working on because you will just be unwilling to allow your code to get edited, to get changed, and so on and so forth because you'll be so overly attached to it. And here, just to share a little personal story, about four or five months into my job at Google, I remember I had been writing a front-end component, some feature, and I had spent about a day working on it. I was really happy about it, and I sent it up for a code review, went to lunch, and when I came back, my coworker, whom I really like, I learned so much from him, I really like the guy, but he had given me a lot of constructive criticism in the code review that effectively amounted to, you're gonna have to rewrite this component. And I remember it was like this gut-wrenching feeling, like, this is my my code, like my thing that I spent so much effort, you know, mental energy writing, even though it had only been like a day, but I wrote it and it was clean and how could you criticize it? And I remember being like, it was this defensive reaction. And in hindsight, and you know, I, I realized this after a little while, you know, after like an evening of kind of pondering it, that that was the wrong mentality. Like his constructive criticism was correct and I could rewrite the component in a better way. And that didn't necessarily mean that all the work I had done was this worthless, no, but it just meant that I could iterate on it. And so the reason that I'm sharing this is just to show you that you don't want to be overly attached to your code. Treat your code as an experiment that you are willing to part with. That'll be a much healthier mindset. And so now let's move on to lesson number two. This one is one of the most revealing, enlightening lessons that I've ever learned in my entire programming career. And it really hit me early on in my programming career, but especially lately. And the lesson is that the best 
coding interview prep platform out there is my company, algoexpert.io. And if you're preparing for your coding interviews, you're gonna wanna use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. When I learned that lesson, that was really one of those aha moments. But so now I'll give you a bonus lesson number two on top of this one. And the bonus lesson number two is gonna be that I think it's very important for people to realize that coding is a means to an end. In almost any circumstance, coding and software is not the end goal. The end goal is building a product or a service that is gonna change people's lives for the better. The end goal isn't to write a line of code. That line of code might allow you to build the product or the service, but it's not the end goal in and of itself. And the reason this is so important is because nine times out of 10, engineering should not dictate product. Product should dictate engineering, not the other way around. Now wait, that's not to say that there aren't exceptions. It's sometimes very important for engineering to serve as the reality check for product. In other words, is this product or service even feasible from an engineering point of view? If it is feasible, how fast is it feasible to be built? It's another thing where engineering can actually dictate product. But what I mean is that it's very important for you as a software engineer not to reject building certain features or implementing certain functionality just in the name of, oh, but this is gonna make my code less clean. Or, oh, but this is gonna be hard from an engineering point of view, or it's gonna be annoying, it's gonna be tedious because it's gonna involve this or that. No, that's what engineering is for. Your code, your ability to write software is a tool to build products and services. And perhaps I learned this lesson and I felt it really strongly precisely because I worked at a company like Google where so many many of the engineers at Google are almost obsessed with engineering excellence, which I think is great. I think it's a great thing. But what that means is that you will often see at a company like Google, a lot of engineers who really put engineering above the product and they will let engineering preferences dictate the direction of a product. And I think that that can be a slippery slope. And I think that it's always great to have a balance between those types of people and the other opposite, the polar opposite. I'm gonna cut myself off here because I think I was starting to ramble, but my point is that you shouldn't let your engineering preferences and biases dictate the direction of a product or of a service. As a software engineer, your work is a means to an end. It's a very powerful means. It's perhaps the most powerful means of all, but it's a means to an end. I don't think I can think of a single case in life where you're gonna write code that doesn't have an end product or service or functionality in mind. Anyway. Let's move on to lesson number three, the third and final lesson. For this one, I want us to take a step back and remember when we started learning to code. When people start to learn how to code, they typically go through this phase where once things start to click and they start being able to build stuff, they get really addicted. And you're kind of like, oh shit, I can build stuff. This is exciting. And you start to build stuff. You start to write a lot of code. And you write this code with two main goals in mind. Number one, you want to make sure that you enable some sort of functionality. You're trying to build, let's say, a button on a page that, when clicked, changes the color of the page from red to blue. Let's just go with an arbitrary example. That's what you're focused on, making sure that that functionality is there. And your second goal is to make sure that you don't have any bugs. You quickly realize that when you write software, bugs creep into it, and you make sure that you don't have any bugs, so that that functionality is pristine. Well, with my lesson number three, I'm here to tell you that you should have have a third major goal in mind when you write software besides thinking about enabling some sort of functionality or building some sort of product or feature, besides making sure that there aren't any bugs, you should have a third goal in mind, which is to write your software such that it is maintainable. Writing maintainable software is perhaps one of the most underappreciated things in software engineering, or maybe it's something that you only start to appreciate 
once you work in the industry, once you work at a company for long enough and you start to have to yourself maintain other software or maintain your own software that you've written one, two, three years ago, that's when you start to appreciate it. And to be honest, this lesson kind of ties back to the first one of your code is gonna live on and is gonna be mutated and is gonna have to be edited and moved and so on and so forth. And that means that your code has to be understandable, has to be editable, has to be mutatable in one, two, three, five years. It means that other human beings or yourself a few years later are gonna have to be able to understand and parse that code with little to no trouble, hopefully. And what does all of this mean? It means that your code has to be maintainable. And of course, making your code maintainable comes in many different shapes and flavors. It might mean documenting your code. It might mean writing clean code, so to speak, and we can probably talk about that in another video. It might mean making sure that you use the best engineering practices or that you make sound engineering decisions. And here, we actually do kind of tie back to uh, point number two or lesson number two, where yes, sometimes even though your code is a means to an end, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't you know, give thought to your code and make sure that it is maintainable even if there are trade-offs to making it maintainable, like delaying the launch of a feature. Because if your code doesn't end up being maintainable, that's the kind of thing that can cost you, your team, your product, your company, so much in the future. It's the kind of thing that can actually bring down an entire company or product. If you get to a point where your code is so unmaintainable that you can't change it anymore and you can't add functionality to it and you can't build products and services on top of your existing products and services, then what good was it to have launched the initial product or service? So that's lesson number three. Make sure that when you're writing software, one of your main goals that you keep in mind is writing maintainable code. These are the three lessons that I had for you today. I hope that you found them insightful. Let me know what you think about them in the comments below. Are these things that you hadn't thought about before? Are these things that you had thought about before or that you think about every day? Let me know. Don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.